This is the perfect land, full of all the resources a kingdom needs to thrive. And this is a barren piece of dirt, where nothing at all exists. And this is going to be where our heroes start. I'm going to disperse 10 humans on each small island. And once it begins, they can race their way to the center to have a thriving civilization. Or they can stay on the outside and die a slow, horrible death. I don't really care which happens as long as they're suffering. In theory, as soon as we start, it should be a race to the center. But these guys aren't always that smart, so we'll see how they react. Alright, off they go. They started an empire right where we were staring at them. The other ones seem to be dispersing themselves amongst their own little islands. We already see them starting to run. They're probably going for the center. If they were smart, they would be. Whoever gets to the center first is going to establish probably a powerful kingdom, which the other ones are all going to want at all times. Uh, this guy's named himself king and just sort of abandoned his kingdom already. He's just taken himself for a walk. They're starting other kingdoms along the little tentacles. Well, they're clearly not very smart because they've already segregated themselves into a bunch of smaller kingdoms that are probably going to have to fight each other. They have managed to create fire out of nothing though, and a house. I did mean to give each and every one of them a single berry bush, so that's my bad. They're going to have to survive without their single berry bush. But so far, the red team is the closest because they at least made it to the turning point where they can get closer to the good land. And the grassy biome will try and make its way up to here, but I think the sand is going to stop it. The sand over here did grow palm trees though, so that's going to be some wood for them they can utilize. The great pie is also getting close to the promised land. He is currently an empire of one though, and he doesn't look particularly excited about his prospects. His name is Atut, and he's the most boring person in the entire world. I really don't know what they can afford to do without any resources though. The realm of Badesh is going to have it figured out soon. It's very interesting to see the different approaches. The guys on top and bottom uh, didn't really spread out anywhere. The side ones did for whatever reason. Maybe because they're closer to here because it wasn't exactly a symmetrical design. But if you wanted to watch things done fairly, you've come to the wrong place. This is the king of Redland so far. He's miracle born and he's honest. Luckily he likes fish because that's pretty much all there is in this world. If there even is fish. It's been four years, the world population has increased by 11 so far, but that will get exponentially better. I can understand why they haven't maybe started to thrive yet. The Realm of Badesh, Team Red, has at least uh, gotten some wood. They've made it to the sand. But to get to the center, they need to pass the guardian of the island, Krobo. I believe he's a crab. I never really realized they needed so very little to actually survive. Like they have literally dirt. But even giving nothing, they build houses and multiply, but they don't really make their way for better resources yet, even though there's trees even right here. They have no, no urge at all to go towards this abundance of food and resources and comfortable living. Since we're not in a big hurry, let's speed time up just a little. Team Red's clearly going to be in the lead because at least they're smart enough to harvest the trees that are readily available. And I'm pretty sure at the very least that's going to turn into things like boats, and they can use boats to get food with this so they can have easy survival. It's been 8 years, the grassland has almost made it up to the sand, and maybe at that point they'll see that and follow the resources inwards. Though I don't have very high hopes, Team Yellow down here has started to move towards the palm trees also. I think as soon as they start to realize there's better stuff here, they'll expand rapidly. These guys at least made a boat that goes nowhere. Oh wait, he can get in there, so they can farm fish. They're taking wood, they're taking fish, they've clearly got the lead. This is the strongest kingdom so far, given that it's only 15 population, they don't currently have an army. But they did also put a boat on the outside of the circle, which is smart. So far, they're the only ones smart enough to actually gather wood and make stuff with it. Everyone else is just kind of living off of dirt. And they're lucky they even get dirt. I was going to give them sand. They're up here sort of just slowly starving. They have the means to do better, they just don't. It's been 15 years and they couldn't be bothered to walk a few hundred meters to the promised land. I like the king of his top kingdom. His favorite food is burgers. Yet he lives here, in the dirt. But who am I to judge? I basically live off noodles and air. They've set up boats everywhere. This kingdom is going to absolutely thrive. It's already got a uh, 35 population. Everyone else is sort of just starving in the dirt because they're stupid. It just happened. They sent like a little uh, scouting party and they set up a kingdom right here. These guys are going to thrive so quickly now. They're going to take over. All because they were the first to make it to the trees and collect boats. That probably helped them so they didn't have to scrounge for food so they could explore more. These guys kind of had the right idea, they just didn't make it to the trees. But look at the difference. This was a, a cast-off community to begin with. They're up to 62. These original colonies went from 10 to 11 and 10 to 13. They're not going anywhere fast. These guys using the trees are just making boats. Boats are the key to this all, really. Can look at them go. Now that they're in here, they're just going to tear down all these trees and berries and resources. They're going to be the absolute dominant force. So far, nobody's really fighting anyone, but 90% of the population is just starving in the dirt. 
Like, these guys are here, there's chickens literally on the edge of the empire. They could at least wander to grab this chicken, and then this chicken, and then this sheep, and say, hey, there's trees, and chicken, and grass, and follow their way in, yet they choose the dirt life. Even these guys are taking their sweet time. Like, they found all the good stuff, they're just not really diving into it fully. They're content to just sit on their boats and fish all day, and I don't know if I could blame them. I think they even found their way in the other way. I'm not sure which way they came about here, but they landed here to start a kingdom amongst the trees and resources, so this team is very smart. Well, let's not be too kind. It's not necessarily that they're very smart, they just walk to the obvious pile of easy resources. It's more so that these guys are just really, really dumb. And the red team just keeps expanding. They're up to 130 population. They have two functioning armies at this point. So if one of the other teams doesn't get in there very soon, this team is going to absolutely dominate everyone. They're even expanding to get more of the fish. Well, since one kingdom is clearly flying ahead of everyone else, let's introduce some proper competition. We're going to drop some orcs in that are going to set up their own things, and they also hate humans and destroy everything in their path, so they're going to start to make a mess of everyone else and expand rapidly. They're already tearing into the humans, which is weird. Yeah, I thought they would go this way and maybe set up a base first, but they're orcs, so they're just going to do what they do. These guys might set up an empire. They're not that smart, and they're very destructive. There we go. Strong Ogrid, so that's going to be some big competition for these guys. They're going to have to deal with them, or the orcs are going to get very strong and hurt the humans. The orcs down here are mostly just destroying the kingdoms, but those kingdoms are weak, so they don't deserve to live. These guys are already up to a party of six, and they did manage to get into a little bit of the corner of the good resources, so they'll be able to thrive and expand quick. Plus, these guys down here are also going to push in on them. And I think that was pretty much a catalyst for this continuous war. As soon as we introduce orcs to the mix, they're going to fight everyone, always. Like, they're already diving right in here to the edge of the humans, and they're going to fight over the boundaries here because they want these resources. There's only 14 orcs on the map currently. They're kind of uh, not great survivors because they're constantly attacking humans, which could be good for them or bad. They're really actually trampling the humans down at this point, even though they have an empire of 250 at this point because they ate this empire. These orcs down here are more likely to thrive because they're not constantly fighting the giant army of humans up here. Although they seem to be doing quite well. And it's beautiful because their strategy is basically just, we don't need a base or anything, let's just go attack the humans. There's no strategy or thought at all. Uh, these dirt idiots are also just planting a house right beside the orcs, which probably isn't going to last very long. Uh, people are mass migrating now and I'm not really sure why. Oh, it's Team Pink. They're surrounding the orcs, which is also really stupid. Or maybe it's actually smart. I don't really know yet. These orcs are full of all sorts of good things. Savage is one I like. Look at the boat these humans have made. They made such good progress. But that is also simply because they made it into the resources. Like, this is one of the founding empires. They made <laughs> wooden paths somehow. They've got 12 people. And at this moment, the humans and orcs more or less are getting along. Never mind, they're fighting. They were just passing through each other, no problem. Okay, the humans are definitely fighting the orcs now, so that's bad news for the orcs. The orcs are a lot stronger than any humans normally, but when they're outnumbered, it's a little bit of a hard battle for them. Looks like the humans had enough of them, so they're going to push them off their island. And that ends the orc empire. The humans finally got smart and did something about it. They're up to 310 population, though. So these orcs down here, beer is the way. Well, it's up to them to build an army that can fight them. They currently have zero army at all, but they are taking at least some of the resources, and I'm pretty sure the orcs can thrive on very little. They even made their first boats. So now they don't have to worry as much about food, so they could worry about just sort of thriving elsewhere. Currently, the mass of humans has four different armies going for itself. Wait, make that five. There's one up there. The orcs currently have 26 people, but if they start to turn that into an army, the tides will shift very fast. If the orcs were smart, they wouldn't go too much further this way to get the attention of the humans. They would continue to utilize these resources to build boats and go kill these humans for their stuff, and slowly expand down here until they were strong enough to actually challenge the humans. The humans have things like legendary walking sticks. They also have a giant with a legendary walking stick. They ran out of ore a while ago because the ore wasn't that much, so they probably don't have that much in sophisticated tools. That also means their armies aren't nearly as strong as they could be. Ooh, and the orcs finally have an army. Uh, there might only be one or two people in it, but they're actually going to be quite strong. Their army did quickly grow up to eight, though, so an army of eight is actually pretty strong. The human armies are probably still stronger, but orcs are just inherently stronger. And I'm pretty sure if the orcs kill the humans, they can pick up their gear, so they'll be much stronger again if they manage to pick up those sticks. I've also noticed the orcs tend to have a lot of traits, where the humans seem to have very few so far. The human's army totals 110, that's three times the orcs' population. Uh, and we've started a war. 
Curiously though, that's humans attacking humans over here and ignoring the orcs for now. I don't know why they have a problem with these 10 guys. These are just guys trying to survive in the dirt. Uh, also, they've declared war on all the other humans. Yeah, literally all of them. Oh, and also, yeah, they just declared war in the whole world at this point. So the orc army is sitting here waiting for them. And the battle begins. Okay, so we're going to slow it down so we can watch what happens. We'll see how many humans the or uh, how many humans join the battle. The orcs might lose this because I think they're really outnumbered. The orc army really wasn't very big, so they're not looking too hot. They fought very bravely and died very quickly. Also, a second army came in, so they would have been wiped out based on that. The orcs are still alive, but I'm pretty sure the humans are about to uh, pillage them real bad. Yeah, I think the humans are going to take over. The orcs still have a 40 population, surprisingly. But the humans are also a little distracted fighting fronts everywhere. But they're also now going to fo focus on the orcs. They're attacking from all sides and the orcs don't actually have an army anymore. They're just a bunch of like regular things running around. Some of these 10 humans are still over here. They're under attack really, but the humans are clearly focusing on the orcs first. It is taking them quite a while to destroy the orcs though. The orcs are putting up a pretty good fight considering. So it's pretty clear at this point that because Pink made it into the resources very early, they were able to just really thrive and get so far ahead that no one's going to catch up. 340 population and growing. And the orcs, as strong as they were, are about to be eliminated. There's three of them left in the entire world and they're probably sitting on boats fishing. They have no idea their family has been slaughtered. And the orcs are officially extinct. Uh, the pink team is going to go destroy the yellow team. Like they're really going to destroy them. These guys are sitting here starving in the dirt. That's why they're flashing every once in a while. And they just took them over. I'm pretty sure they surrendered and said, yeah, you know, we'll join your kingdom because you guys actually have food. So the red team destroyed everyone else, at least so far. So what if we had a little bit of land down here and fill this with, say, 100 orcs? Are they going to be able to build up an, uh, an empire strong enough to take this out? They should want those resources. That's officially 100 orcs spent right there. So from there, they're going to spread out in rather neat fashion. They even call themselves warriors, so they mean business. They've already divided themselves, but they're going to go start rampaging around and really annoy the humans. Probably going to grab their attention way faster than they should have, but they will also destroy humans quickly. I've also given them absolutely nothing to work with, so they're also just going to enjoy their dirt empires. But they are also moving into the trees very quickly and the sand, so they know that much. Before long, they should build their boats and be able to build a thriving empire, maybe. We did put down almost a quarter of the number of humans. The humans are obviously a lot more advanced and resourced, but we'll see what ends up happening. Pretty sure the humans are already getting annoyed by the new orcs that have shown up, so they're going to try and move in on them ASAP. They're just sort of wandering around in the dirt. They don't really have anything to do. They don't know what to do. The problem is the ones that are most set up to thrive are on the edge of the human empire and they're going to want to keep moving in on those resources and the humans probably aren't going to love that. Curiously though, the humans do have some units sitting here that are starving to death, probably because they're living in this little dirt kingdom. So I don't know why they're fighting over this, but they earned their fate. If the orcs are smart, they might just go over, take over this kingdom and take these guys gear. They don't have great stuff, but they do have some stuff. The orcs are building their boat, so that means they'll be able to feed themselves pretty sufficiently. If they were smart, they would just join into one empire and live off this food and all put their resources into making themselves better because they're getting closer and closer to humans and humans are not going to like that. The problem might more so be that the orcs don't like humans, so as soon as they see them, they're going to attack them because they're stupid, but that's their own problem. The humans are now walking through the orcs for some reason. Not really sure why that guy's on his way through there. He walked through with a legendary weapon, a bronze smart reaver, whatever that is. Maybe he's just flexing on the orcs to show how strong he is. So basically we've given the orcs a tiny little corner of the map. They're not really utilizing it super well, but well enough. They gotta get a little bit stronger to do anything against the humans anyway. The humans are really thriving because they've just got everything they want. Like they've got so many resources, they're just building big statues of nothing. They've declared war on... Okay, they don't like how big the orcs are getting, so they're going to go try and destroy them. They were in a hurry to get there, and boy did they get there quick. They've sent uh, two of their armies to get there so far, maybe even on boats. So they're once again dismantling the orcs very badly. I think it's because the orc population got high and they probably started to develop their own armies. And the use of ranged weapons is really bad for orcs, as it turns out. They have epic iron bows, so they're able to sit way over here and just rain down on the orcs. And it turns out the we uh, orcs are weak to arrows. I mean, the orc leader seems to have an epic wooden stick, so he can hit people with that. But he also seems to be beating a hasty retreat. Yeah, they're destroying the orcs once again. There's just no way to have them build up. As soon as they get even slightly strong, the humans move straight in. Because they still sit at about 380 population and they have armies everywhere.
Alright, well that empire's certainly been destroyed. There's still the other orc empires they don't seem as worried about. This one does have an army, but this one's also starving. But at this point I can't help but wonder, will the human empire eventually split itself? The answer is yes, of course it will, they're humans. I've also got a mod installed where speed 5 isn't speed 5 anymore, it's turbo speed. So we're going through a year every 2 or 3 seconds. So we can just let this run for the next million years to see exactly what transpires in the world without any help. The humans didn't entirely destroy the orcs, but they did push them all the way out of the resources. But now they're also sick of the orcs, so they're going to go in and destroy them. That uh, empire also broke off temporarily, and the orcs are getting wrecked. Just one empire though, they take out one empire at a time before leaving to show the rest of the orcs this is what's coming for you soon. There was a big split. 75 uh, of the humans just split off over here. They probably don't have the resources to fight the main empire, but they do have a bit over here. Alright, well, the pink empire just took them right back over, and there's three of them left up here, and they're gone. It was a short-lived rebellion. A hundred and something years later, and we've got a pretty big shift in things. The empire has turned purple because the red ones are being eliminated. Population has jumped up. Uh, this is a population of 500, but they're currently being warred really bad, so they're losing numbers. But they are also getting to be a really advanced civilization at this point. They have nice houses and fountains and everything. And there even is still some orcs hanging out down here. I think no one bothers them because they're not bothering anyone living in the dirt. And just like that, the Red Empire has been completely destroyed. It's shifted into the Pinnock with 800 population. And they've declared war on the two orcs down here. And now the orcs have been eliminated once again. The purple have taken over. And they're really thriving on this screwy little world. I don't know why they keep going to the outside. But they do. You think they'd learn to take some of the seeds from here and bring them over the sand and plant them here to turn all this into good stuff. Well, it's clear who the winner is here. They're up to 1100 population now and that's going to keep growing. But that kind of makes me wonder how many orcs it would take to actually overrun this. I can just send them in a whole bunch at a time. Like if I throw down 700 orcs, is that going to disrupt the entire world that badly? The humans are obviously not going to love that super much. The orcs are going to be very basic, but even very basic orcs are very strong. They're having a big chaotic battle here like ants. But they're definitely hurting the humans, because the humans are down to 1,000 and the orcs are sitting at about 500. The armies will move in, but they'll just throw their numbers at them. I can already tell we're going to need more orcs. So the orcs are just going to pile on to whatever. Those ranged units aren't that good anymore because the orcs are just charging right into them. That's a scary spot for the ranged things to sit, but we'll see who overcomes this battle. The orcs are losing a lot of numbers. Maybe the humans at this point are just too advanced. They're ranged weapons. They can just bottleneck them here and just rain arrows on them and destroy them all. Yeah, we can tell by the numbers. The orcs have lost half their population, the humans have lost like 10% just because they're so much better militarized. The orcs are very quickly being eliminated, the humans are actually growing in number, but that's the power of just controlling where all the resources are. As soon as the humans got to here, they were just way far ahead of everyone else. How good do you think they are about putting out fires? If we rain some fire in all corners of their little world, is it just going to continue to move inwards and destroy like everything? And as they started raining fire on, the empire split again. Yeah, it looks like they're pretty good about, about putting the fires out. There's a little bit of fire there. Uh, we're just going to add a few dragons to help the fire along. Oh, I can shift click spawn these. Oh, this whole world's going to burn. Okay, correction, the whole world has burned. These guys were quick. I never realized how destructive these were. Uh, yeah, I sorted this Game of Thrones the whole world. I didn't realize that was going to go so quickly. It turns out the dragons are the winners after all. Humans are all but eliminated. They just lost like 99% of their units and that's going quick because if they're not currently dead, they're probably on fire. Another very scientific experiment concluded.